Hey YouTube, it's Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I'm back again with another video. In today's video, I'm going to talk about 10, yes, you heard that right, 10 handbag buying habits and realizations I have learned so far over the past several years. And I was inspired to do this video based on two videos by fellow YouTubers, one of which I'm friends with, Julie with Agent Bag Reviews, and the other who came up with the idea, and that is Dory Nicole. Now their videos focus on five handbag buying habits and realizations that they have learned so far. But when I was making up my list, I came up with 10. I couldn't just stop at five. I got to about seven and I had to think a little bit harder, but I think that all 10 are genuine, real handbag buying habits and realizations. So we're just gonna go with that. The first one, it I is that I do not like extremely small bags for the most part. And let me define extremely small. I know that there's like little card holder bags and wallet on chains, and those are just out the window or out the door for me. I'm not interested in those. But when I say small bags or extremely small bags, I'm talking around the size of the Prada re-edition. It's a bag that I can make work I can downsize and fit my stuff inside. And once I do, I really enjoy it. But in all reality, I don't do that all that often. And so for that reason, I do not need to buy any more bags that are this size. I have enough. Even though I do love them once I move in, I just don't wanna move in that often. That said, I also don't want to sell them because they do have a place and a purpose. This size bag is great when you are traveling. This size is great for a night out when you don't want a big bag on your lap. I don't go out very often. My kids are both in sports, and so I find myself going out to sports for my social life, not going out to dinner with my husband. That may all change in the next several years. Both kids will be out of the house likely in four years, and I may have to reevaluate what size bags I prefer. But the extremely small bag, the one I have to downsize to get into, is not it. I prefer bags that are more the medium size, the small slash medium. A little bigger than small, but a little smaller than medium. And these are two examples. I can fit everything I need into this small Lulu bag, except for a bottle of Diet Dr. Pepper. And for my ideal bag size, I don't have to be able to fit that, although it is a nice perk. And I found carrying this Odeon Tote PM, which is on the bigger end of my medium bags, to be quite delightful. And the Diet Dr. Pepper does fit quite nicely inside of this beauty. So this is the bag size I like because I can move my items freely between these two bags as well as many others in my closet and not have to downsize or think about it, which makes switching up bags really easy. So speaking of switching up bags really easily, this is the next realization that I have learned. And it's that I pick bags for the day based on durability, size, and my jewelry and clothing that I have selected. And I picked this bag yesterday because I thought I was going to a parade. And so I could wear it crossbody, it would fit everything I needed, and this one will hold a Diet Dr. Pepper. And I really like to have a drink on me, especially if I'm at an event like a parade that's gonna take a while. This is the Keepa in the Monogram Eclipse by Louis Vuitton. And it is a fabulous size bag for travel and also for every day. So I would definitely classify it as a medium bag. And for the parade, I was wearing black with a gray jacket. And so color-wise, this bag worked perfectly. And then I feel like the gunmetal hardware pairs nicely with silver or white gold jewelry, which I also had on and still have on today. The next handbag realization, so we're at number three, is that I feel like I am at max capacity in my closet. I have about 85 handbags and honestly, I like it better when I have about 10 less, 
but there's not any I want to part with at this moment. And so I may have to come up with some ways to create room besides parting with a handbag. And really what I need to do is I need to go through my clothes and find things that are too big for me which is an exhausting process because you do have to try a lot of that on. And then I need to box those items up and label them. And by doing that, I'm going to create more space and make being in here more of a happy place. And this is one of my happy places to be. And so I definitely need to declutter a bit. And that is the third realization that I have come to, that when you get too much, you need to either sell, donate, whatever you can do to decrease the amount of stuff around you so you can enjoy what you have left at the end of the day. The fourth realization is that yes, I do have a shopping addiction and it's heavily focused on handbags, but I wouldn't say that that is the only thing I like to shop for. I really like to shop for clothing and jewelry and handbags and shoes to a lesser extent. But let me just tell you, I will find a brand I like, like Z Supply or Hey Dude Shoes or Risen Denim, and I will start hunting on the internet for deals. And so when it comes to fashion and shoes, that's sort of what I do. I like to hunt for the deals. And the same is true for handbags. I like to scroll the Facebook pages. I like to scroll Yugi's Closet. I like to scroll Fashion File, eBay, to a lesser extent now eBay. If you haven't seen my most recent video on eBay, I will link it down below. But there are lots of places I like to look depending on what I'm looking for. And sometimes I'm in the mood to look at clothes and sometimes I'm in the mood to look at shoes or jewelry. Most of the time I'm in the mood to look at handbags. One of these days, hopefully I will get to the point where I don't want to look at handbags anymore. And when that day comes, I will let you know. So tying into that, like I said, if I find a brand I really like, with regards to clothing or shoes or handbags, I like to search for deals. And anymore with handbags, it is so hard to buy luxury handbags full price from the boutique for me. I mean, there are some exceptions. For example, the Speedy 20 from Louis Vuitton in the canvas prints, this bag sells for essentially retail on the pre-loved market. And so I would much, much, much rather have a brand new from boutique speedy 20 than buy a pre-loved speedy 20. people a lot of times will part out the strap and you can certainly do that after you buy it brand new from the boutique and get a deal on this particular bag that way but in the case of my odeon tote pm this bag it wasn't even available to purchase it brand new by the time i found it and because it wasn't a super popular bag in the tote style, I was able to score this for a deal. It was, I think, over 30% off of retail, and it was in like-new, pristine condition. And so I've talked about the fourth thing being that I like to get a deal. I will buy from the boutique in some cases, but when the price is so much lower to buy it pre-loved in like new condition, I would so much rather go that route. That said, let's move on to number five. Number five is I really only want to buy pre-loved bags that are in like new, pristine, unused feeling condition. I don't want to make exceptions for any bag. I want it to be like new, period. And you can find those bags if you search for them. And so what I do to find those bags that are like new and pristine and don't have odors or corner rubs or stains inside is I ask lots of questions of the seller. If it's an individual seller on eBay, for example, and I also make sure to read the pre-loved website's descriptions thoroughly. And one of the reasons I like to shop with fashion files so, so much is because I can contact a sales associate or a personal shopper with fashion file and they will send me as many pictures as I want of the bag. They'll send me video. I think they even FaceTime 
you. I think they've done that with me, but I can't remember. Usually I'm happy with just the photographs and I will ask them to call me sometimes so I can ask them just the general use feeling type questions that I want to know that's hard to describe in a text scenario. And to all of you sellers out there, I would just encourage you to be as forthcoming and as honest as possible about the condition of the bag that you are selling. I always try to do that when I sell things because I don't want to have anybody want to return something that I sell to them. And I don't want to return anything that I buy from somebody because it is a hassle and it is stressful. And so I find by asking all the questions, asking for pictures, asking for video, and just clarifying everything that I can think of, that that is the best way to go. I think I'm at number seven now. I have sort of lost track. And number seven is that Louis Vuitton is my favorite luxury designer brand. I would say the Saint Laurent is second, but I don't get excited about adding more Saint Laurent like I do about adding more or different Louis Vuitton. So with my Louis Vuitton collection, there really aren't any bags left that I think I wanna sell. Same is true with my Saint Laurent collection, but with my Saint Laurent collection, I have four bags in the same size in three different styles. And I really haven't ventured out from those styles much. I also have two camera bags and then I have one Toy Lulu, which is the smaller version of the Small Lulu. And the newer styles that Saint Laurent have come out with, they just aren't my cup of tea. And so that's why, even though I love my Saint Laurent pieces, I haven't been as tempted to add new ones and you haven't seen a lot of new additions. There is one exception and you're going to find out about that very soon, but I don't wanna spoil the surprise. With Louis Vuitton, however, I find when I am combing the pre-love market that sometimes I find a style like the Palace BB that went out before I ever started looking at Louis Vuitton seriously or that I didn't know about or pay attention to. And I get so excited about that. And so for me, a lot of times the pre-loved Louis Vuitton bags, I get as excited or more excited than whatever is new in boutique. So I don't feel like I have to have that newest thing. And the prices for Louis Vuitton in boutique right now are insane. But you can find amazing deals on Louis Vuitton pre-loved. Like most of the other brands out there, it just doesn't hold its value like we might hope it would. But that allows us out there who like to shop pre-loved and don't mind hunting for a deal in pristine like new condition. It means that the world is our oyster and we can find some amazing bags like new for amazing deals. And I think that's why with Louis Vuitton that I get so excited about looking and seeing what is out there. My favorite contemporary brand right now is Dress Up Your Purse. And so here is the Paris 15. My favorite size is this one. There's also a Le Petite Paris 15 that is similar in size to the Pochette Matisse East West by Louis Vuitton. And then I also absolutely love the mini Boston bag. And this is my 7,000 subscriber giveaway. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, I have less than 100 subscribers to go before I'm going to announce the rules for this giveaway. I've decorated this bag with a Louis Vuitton luggage tag and a chain, which are both going to be in included in the giveaway prize. So my favorite contemporary brand, the one I wear the most often is my Dress Up Your Purse bags. And these are the two styles that I love. I love the Togo leather. I love the durability, the feel of it. They just feel so luxurious. Now I'm not saying I don't love Coach and Marc Jacobs. I do, but I have more of these bags than I do Coach or Marc Jacobs. And I wear both of these styles more than I wear those other two brands. So that's how I determined that Dress Up Your Purse is my favorite contemporary brand, at least currently. So I think we're at number nine. If I have missed one and I finished the video, 
we may just not count that. But I think I've reached number nine, and that is that I'm really trying hard to only buy wearable handbags, usable handbags, not ones that I am terrified to use, in other words. And that is why I have sold a bunch of handbags, including my Chanel Medium Large Classic Flap, my Capucines, my Twist, and my Lady Dior. I've sold all of those because I did not find those bags to be very wearable. And they were all gorgeous. And having them in my collection was such a treat. I really enjoyed buying each one, having it while I had it, and selling it whenever I was ready to let it go. And that is number 10. I get almost, if not as excited about selling as I do about buying. And yes, it is stressful, but buying is stressful too. Even if you buy brand new from the boutique, it can be a stressful experience because you can get a bag that has defects from the boutique, just like you can get a bag that has defects pre-loved. The difference is, is that if you're shopping online, you don't get to see that boutique bag ahead of time. If you're shopping with a sales associate, then you likely can. Pre-love though, you can see all the pictures ahead of time in a lot of cases. So sometimes that enables you to weed out bags that you wouldn't want to keep before you ever buy them. But yes, I get as excited about selling bags that I've decided I'm done with as I do about bringing in new ones. Because when I sell a bag, I get money for that bag. I clear up space in my closet. I feel like I'm turning a page to the next chapter where I can look to see what it is, if I haven't already found it, that's going to make me happier than that bag was at the moment that I sold it. So those are the 10 handbag realizations or buying habits that I came up with. And I would encourage you to go check out both Julie and Dory Nicole's videos. They're both great. I've watched both of them. This was a really fun topic to tackle. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Do it and ring the notification bell so that you are notified of future exciting content such as this. Also, go find me on Instagram. The name there's the same. It's the at symbol, then the handbag housewife, all lowercase. You can DM me there or you can email me at thehandbaghousewife at gmail.com. If I don't hear from you, I will see you again real soon. Take care and have a fabulous day. Bye.